What is your American dream? My American dream is to have a combination of living in an urban environment with a lot of culture and, and beautiful things, but also being able to be around nature. As, as someone who's not a Native American, I, the, I, the dream was to come here and do art and be creative and, and do, it, do it at a high level and, and you know, have it seen by everyone out there, and it's definitely coming true. I just want to do what I love um, and be able to make a living off of that. American dream is like free, like mm. everybody free uh, and then uh, everybody friendly. The American dream was to just come to the United States for a better and greener pastures and I did achieve that. Everyone has a right to the American dream. Welcome everybody, it's Brad Show Live. It is Friday the 13th. <laughs> Jonathan Yo-Yo Elliot. I'm scared. Spooked. Are you spooked? I'm spooked. <laughs> one with all the spookiness i my love birthday. spookiness right around halloween so i, I have no fears I, I want you to know i was okay with friday the 13th until i heard that music i'm here for it and now i'm a little spooked out i love it mm. huh hmm. do you know that today is the day of bad luck throughout all of western culture yes yeah. It doesn't happen often. I'm sitting over very heavy lights. Same here. <laughs> There's like a lot of heavy lights that if like it fell on my head right now, it would really hurt. It would be pretty bad. Very bad. <laughs> There's a lot of movies on this this theme. So, I mean, we can set up a lot of different situations or, or scenes <laughs> in our minds. I just have this feeling this light's gonna fall on my head. Yeah. You know, we're just not gonna wish that. We're, We're just right. not. I'm just gonna move a little bit away from. <laughs> Lisa Bling Rose says, "I don't like Friday the 13th. I'll take 12 and a half, not the 13th." Well, <laughs> some say Friday the 13th dates back to biblical times, because, for example, there were 13 disciples at the Last Supper, mm. and Friday is said to be the day that Adam and Eve ate oh. the forbidden fruit. No wonder it always goes yes. down on Friday. That's why they'd be having the club nights. Some say it wasn't until the Victorian era in 1907 when Thomas W. Lawson's popular novel Friday the 13th was published and an unscrupulous broker who crashed, about an unscrupulous broker who crashed the stock market. Maybe it was the slasher films of the 1980s. Jason. Oof. I don't like that guy. From <laughs> Friday the 13th. Here's a fun fact. Friday the 13th fun fact, Vanessa. You want to hear a fun fact for Friday the 13th? Oh, I do. And it's been rainy in Miami all day. So all this spooky talk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The there's, summer there's... camp I went to, that's where they filmed Friday. The 13th. Whoa. No. Yes. No. In, in Kent, Connecticut. Oh, that was in Connecticut? In Connecticut, Jeez. yeah. Did you go there? How many summers did you go there? Six. Oh. And and it was like the third or fourth summer I was there, we showed up and we found out that while, you know, bef you know a couple weeks before the campers arrived, mm -hmm. that's when they filmed the movie. Oh. Pretty deep. <laughs> so that's saw the movie how was it? what when you saw the movie how was that oh when I don't oh, I don't see the movie you never watched it never I don't I don't I don't watch 
I don't watch Jason movies. What? Not, I went to that camp. You, I wouldn't sleep. <laughs> Uh, to this day, I won't watch a Jason movie. Oh, that would be pretty. I, I would watch it. I love scary movies. You know, researchers <laughs> have found that both Friday and the number 13 have long been regarded as signs of good fortune, though. In pagan times, for instance, Friday was believed to be associated with divine feminism. Huh. And Taylor Swift. Okay. Okay, Taylor <laughs> Swift. All right, well, let's see what Taylor Swift has to say. <laughs> She yeah, considers 13 lucky number <laughs> and often performed with the number written on her hand early in her career. That's a little bizarre. Yeah, it sounds like the Illuminati yes, to me. That sounds a little <laughs> bizarre. Oh, what? She really does. Look at the 13. Mm. Oh, that's, that's tatted on her hand. In 2009, she told MTV, I was born on the 13th. I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. My first album went gold in 13 uh -huh. weeks. My first number one song had a 13 second introduction. Every time I've won an award, it's been, I've been seated in either the 13th seat, the 13th row, the 13th section on row M, which is the 13th letter. Basically, whenever 13 comes up in my life, it's a good thing. For Taylor Swift, yes. Yeah, but how about the rest of the world? The rest of the world. And history. The rest of the world is <laughs> The rest of the world is wondering when this light's gonna fall on my head. <laughs> That's what the rest of the world did about Taylor Swift. Listen, I'm all about law of attraction, so I'm gonna take Taylor Swift's uh, idea and just say that it's my lucky number two. I wanna just, can, can someone get my bed and my pillow and I just wanna go in bed with my pillow until Saturday the 14th. You're giving me Final Destination vibes, but let's move oh, on. Oh, hell no. Now that I don't, I don't play with. That's too real for me. All right, let's say hello to Jessica Levy. Squad up. Happy. Front. Let's turn. You know when they say turn that frown upside down? I'm not frowning. Yeah, let's turn that 13 into 31. Okay. Turn it around. <laughs> Okay. I don't know what that means, Ooh, but... Ooh, October 31st, yes. Halloween. Ooh, that's scary, Ooh. too. Is that supposed to mean something? I don't know. Have we? Have we just come across something? No. No? Okay. No. <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Levy, squad up. Linda Shaw, Lisa Brumel, how are you? But what's very interesting, what's with this? Yo-Yo and I, I just realized this, Yo-Yo. Hmm. Yo-Yo and I went for coffee yesterday. By the way, Vanessa, are you feeling better today? You were a little under the weather. Yes, good, yes, good, much better. Good, good, Because you seemed right. smiling and happy and you looked okay, so I didn't ask, but I should have. Um, yeah, Yo-Yo and I yesterday before the show went to Starbucks. And right next to Starbucks is the Halloween oh. store that was opening up today on Friday the 13th. Is it really? Yeah, what's up with that? Wow. What's up with the Halloween I'm... store opening up on Friday the 13th? I don't know. There's too many coincidences here. Exactly. <laughs> right? And Yo-Yo and I didn't even realize it. We're like, oh, and we were talking about it like, wow, Halloween's already? Right. They're opening up the store tomorrow? We're focused on the wrong part of the story. Yes, we were. <laughs> Linda Shore, squad up. How, how are you? Willie L. Williams said hello. Elizabeth Francis. By the way, Vanessa, do you know what all these people have in common? Everybody I'm saying. Lisa Brumel and Carol the Tiger. Lisa Bling, Barbara Butler, Dion Reed. What, top fans? Do, do you know what they yeah. all have in common? Top fans. They like and subscribe. Oh. <laughs> so, because other than that, they wouldn't even know we were on right now, that right? That part. Let's, oh, say, yeah. let's say hello on YouTube to Chetty Manduri, Ariana Broderick, Squad Up, K God Bless, Shan Shan Smith, Pierre Agbazuki, and DPL with a Friday the 13th pre schmooze immigration question. DPL. DPL. Brad, I have a question. For good moral character, do I need to apply for U.S. citizenship in exactly five years or 3.8 a little early? I was arrested for a petty offense, not more than six months charge. Got expunged. Thanks. 
It depends on are you basing good are you basing your citizenship on marriage in a bona fide marriage, then you need three years good moral character. If you're basing your citizenship on regular having a green card for five years, then you need five years good moral character. Did you shout out Star Girl Mika? Star Girl Mika squat up happy. She's Friday, like, I'm here, Brad. Happy Friday the thirteenth. I wonder if DPL had that petty offense on the th Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's bad luck. We'll have to get more information. We, we need more information <laughs> from him on that or her. All right, take it away, Jonathan. Absolutely, all right, squad. Now remember to share only way that other people who aren't subscribed to the channel can find out that we're here for our pop-up show. So make sure you share right now on all social media platforms because we're gonna start schmoozing with Brad talking about some Friday stories to start our weekend off feeling good, including details about your Jado and the new director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the agency's first female director and the daughter of Arab and Mexican immigrants. And we're going to see the amazing reaction of a 13-year-old girl involved in a roller coaster mm -mm. bird incident mm -mm. that was caught on camera. And then, speaking of Friday the 13th and superstitions, we'll watch a behind-the-scenes video bird incident involving a certain co-host we all know and love who has a fear of birds. We're having the bird video today? It's Friday. It is this, okay. this is my lucky this is, day. This is not my this lucky day. This is my lucky day. If we're doing, the, if we're doing, the, if we're doing the bird video, it's my lucky day. I hate Friday the 13th now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see that. And, and by the way, public service announcement to Jessica Limi, Joel Reed. I see you in the classroom. Don't worry, Jessica Limi. <laughs> yeah, gotta shout her and out. of course, you can call Spar and Bernstein, 1-800-529-5465. That is also the telephone number to get on our show right now. 1-800-529-5465. If you call, I will be answering your immigration questions in a few minutes internationally. It's plus one, two, one, two. Two two seven eight nine three three. I have my Friday schmooze in my hands. You ready to go? Let's schmooze. All right. So here's some good Friday the Thirteenth news for Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Did you see this? Jamie Spears, the father. Yeah. He has signaled an illegal response yesterday that he is stepping down as the conservator of the singer's estate. The fact that he conceded in a filing that he must be removed is vindication for Britney Spears. Uh, Jamie Spears had defended his actions as conservator in the response yesterday and called for an orderly transition to a new conservator following resolution of some outstanding matters. How about no conservator? Right. Just give the woman her money already. Right. Why do they need anybody? Right. So the only thing, so... I obviously am team Britney, and um, I've been wanting this for her, but now I don't I'm think, also... is, I, have you met anybody who's like team uh, Britney's father? No, but what? My, my concern is I see the videos that she's been coming out with and the cries of help. She's not okay. It's, there's some kind of like mentally instability let, let me, let me, there. So, let me... so, so, so yeah, listen, okay. mm -hmm. so all I am hoping is that this doesn't, you know, like she's going to be able to handle all of this, you know? Um, it's unfortunate that she didn't have somebody like her father who should have been a person that she could trust to help her out with it. But I just want to make sure, I, I, I do hope that she will be okay with all of this on her own because she is not as stable as she was before when she, you know when she was younger and before all of this trash happened to her so i'm just i'm just i'm being optimistic and i'm hoping for the best for her but she's not all the way stable well i'll say this everybody's a little crazy some people are a lot crazy but and maybe she is stable maybe she's not i'm not a psychiatrist neither are you yo yo you're right. just seeing her this is all, this as is all a like character on instagram mm -hmm. but you have absolutely no idea she's obviously able to live on her own all right she's not institutionalized 
She is able to wake up and brush her teeth and eat and clean herself. And, I'm not saying she's right. crazy. So, though. I'm so not she's if crazy. she's able to do that, she's able to keep a bank account. Right. Even if it's millions of dollars. That's how I think of it. No, that's how I look at, at it. And like I said, I mean, don't say it like that's all you think. I, that's what I think as well. I'm just hoping that she will be okay with it. Like, I'm just putting that out there because it's kind of, you know, seeing the videos, it really hurts me because. She wasn't like how she acts on the, you know, in these videos. She wasn't like that before. Right. You know, you can tell that there's something that isn't all the way there, you know. And so I, I'm just hoping that she will be okay with this. That's, I, I'm, that's all. I'm, on I'm happy that she's got this. She deserves it. It's hers. But I'm just hoping that everything will be okay. Yeah, I'm on Team Yo-Yo with that because some of her videos is like a train wreck. Yeah, it's yes. it's it's really sad. Actually, it's yeah, really, really sad because she is. was because I started to remember we we watched a documentary and we saw like her older um, interviews when she was younger. You know, just like I don't know, it was it was like she was all there. You know, and now in these videos, it's it's like. Yeah, you, you look with a side eye. So I'm just I'm just hoping that. She, she will be okay with you all You know what we're going to do, Yo-Yo and Vanessa, on mm -hmm. Tuesday? Mm -hmm. We'll sit down with some tea, mm. and we'll have a longer discussion about this with the okay. squad. What do you think? Well, that's quick. Yeah, real, think quick real quick, what do you, what, real quick, what do you feel about this situation? Okay, so I think that there is a big difference, right, where if someone can you know, have any essential needs, take care of themselves, essentially, also be in the same position to take care of an overwhelm of finance and an empire and all of these other things that the Britney Spears brand is after having it withheld for so much time, right? And yeah, like, it's almost like you're setting a prisoner free. Like, yeah, you just don't know where it's going to go. All of it, it's like, I, you know, it's hers for sure. But do you even know where to funnel and navigate this? Like, effective immediately is all just fingers crossed for all her. right well well she hasn't she she doesn't have her money yet the, the, apparently there but may be another it. conservator so we'll oh, see what happens be... uh meanwhile in immigration news er yeah. do i hope i'm pronouncing her name right i like the name she's though. gonna become the first woman and first person of arab and mexican descent to be sworn in as the director of the united states citizenship and immigration services after the Senate confirmed her nomination on Friday, July 30th, not Friday the 13th. <laughs> the agency has not had a Senate confirmed leader in more than two years because Donald Trump kept um, installing interim uh, commissioners simply and interim directors simply because he knew that the people he was putting in charge would never pass Senate confirmation. Jadu, the daughter of a Mexican and Iraqi immigrant, was born and raised in Chula Vista, California, wherever that may be. Chula Vista, I know about Where's that. Where's Chula Vista? Uh, I've just heard of it. You've so heard of it. I think it's Southern California, but I can She received out. a master's degree from Stanford University, a law degree from UCLA, both really, really fine schools. Uh, and uh, the confirmation of Jadu comes after years of massive changes that occurred during the Trump administration, hopefully she will put some sanity back at USCIS. Hopefully we can get applications moving there a little faster than what's been happening recently. Oh yeah, so it's a uh, second largest city in San Diego. So it is Southern California. Oh, it's, it's between San Diego and Tijuana right there yes. on the uh, border. Yep, yeah, that's why I heard of it. Mm. All right, meanwhile, a video filmed aboard an amusement park ride at the Jersey Shore captured the moment a 13-year-old collided with a seagull. Kill me now. Kylie Holman was riding the spring shot with friend Georgia Reed at Maurice Pierce in Wildwood, New Jersey, when she came right in, right, right in, seagull. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! Was that part of the ride? Like you got flow, you know, flung, flung up, and then they they put a fake seagull at you. Well, yeah. that was a real seagull. Okay, that definitely was real, it. and she had to grab it. Oh it my God! It was stuck to her face. Do you understand? The girl oh. said. The girl said she tried to tell a friend what happened, oh but the other God. girl was too distracted to hear about her seagull I'm so encounter. Out. I'm so stressed out. 
And Al Alina Reed, the mother, was on the ground. She said she didn't know what was going on. Um, oh my God! Yeah, the best the best part of Kylie's reaction was her saying, "I can't wait to see this video." You got me messed up. Like that definitely would not have been Brad, the words that came. Brad, <laughs> swap that young lady with Yo Yo's <laughs> face. <laughs> Yo! Oh my God, y'all! I would. No, y'all would. Oh would, my God! Can you imagine? Y'all would have a memorial for me. <laughs> like y'all would be having a memorial for me. I'm creating a gift. I'm gonna create a meme. I'm gonna create a meme. <laughs> All right, wait, 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 wait. We have a video though, Vanessa. Right? Right? We have a video of Yadathan out in the park getting attacked by a bird. Let's see this one. Birds don't like me, and but, I don't like birds. But Yadathan, the bird was not within 20 feet of you. Bread now. Brad, was that bird even close to Yadavid? Come see Second. me. Oh! Look at that. Oh, it was on the other side of the park, Yadavid. Do you see how the birds came like this and then no, went away? No, no, he was Why? on the other Yadavid, Yadavid. I wish y'all could go slow mo. Oh! <laughs> you see them curve. Yadavid, if I me. if I had a tractor trailer, okay, Willie L. Williams could have driven his tractor trailer between you and the bird and not touched anybody. I can't. Look at how Nesquik. Look, look, look at how it goes like this and it goes away. It, oh! <laughs> you could All see right. it. Can we see the little girl's reaction? How cool and calm and collected she was. Look how cool and calm and collected the little girl was. Oh yeah, my she, God. She's okay with oh it. Oh my. She's okay with it. Yeah, the bird hit me. Now let's see our very own Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias. <laughs> We don't like birds over here. No yeah. bird zone. Oh, he turned from Oh <laughs> my god. That is that is, too funny. that is too <laughs> funny. Uh yeah, I, I, went, I, I we once had a bird in my home and it wouldn't leave. You would have freaked out, right? You would I have a video of that. A bird came walking through the front door and it was stuck in our kitchen and I try and I sprained my ankle try to broom it away sprain my ankle you know what and it Vanessa, flew towards me Vanessa next time we have a bird story remind us to get Jonathan's, the video Jonathan's video of the bird in his home nah y'all got to get to a certain amount of shares in order to see that video <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right meanwhile during the pandemic this is uh this is a nice story during the pandemic Minneapolis resident Benjamin didn't have many playmates because his age is two years old his neighbor, Mary, lived alone and spent her days watching TV game shows and playing an electric version of Yahtzee. Mary was 100 years old. But Mary was not lonely during the lockdown when she looked out of her kitchen and saw Benjamin and his mom playing in their backyard. And those moments marked the beginning of a very special relationship between the two. Benjamin and Mary's worlds were separated by a chain link fence and nearly 100 years, a century of life. Benjamin was nine months old and Mary O'Neill was 98 years old when they met. But in the months that followed, Benjamin spent more time outside as he learned to take his first steps. Uh -huh. O'Neill and Benjamin's friendship started with casual waves from afar. And then eventually they were hanging out across the fence oh. from one another. And they found oh. each other, two friends. Oh. Isn't that Love nice? It. Yeah. Uh, now Olsen said, as Benjamin became more mobile over the course of the summer, uh, his interactions with O'Neill also became much more active. Shortly after learning to walk in the fall, Benjamin began running over to O'Neill's fence to bring her his oh. ball, which evolved into uh, a favorite pastime, cane ball. After Benjamin runs over to O'Neill's fence and brings her a ball, O'Neill playfully hit it back with her cane. Aww. Oh, that's cute. I love it. Yes. And in more toddler news, my heart is melting. <laughs> in more to in more toddler news, an Ohio mom had an unexpected cameo in the middle of a major league soccer game when her two-year-old ran out on the field. Morgan Tucker of Moscow, Ohio, took her son Zadik to his first soccer game Saturday night. About 70 minutes into the game, Tucker said she turned her head for one second, oh. and Zadik slid uh. under the fence and was wow. on the field. 
The mother and son were guests of Tucker's employer and were sitting in club seats <laughs> on the sidelines. Yo. <laughs> Is that the funniest thing? Uh, Tucker was captured on camera, sprinting onto the field and then sliding in order to tackle Zadik and take him off yeah. the field. <laughs> That's both actually hilarious. Both, yeah. Wow. Both Tucker and Zadik made it off the field. I'm oh, going to tell you, that kid is like, um, um, you know, the uh, the Home Alone kid, you right. know? Kevin right, just get him in trouble. Get him in trouble. That kid's going to be a troublemaker. I'm not going. I'm not going to hold you guys. That kid reminds me of me as a kid. That's, that that's a would, tr that that's a me. troublemaker. That would be me as a that's kid. That's a troublemaker. Well, that was me as a kid. Yes. <laughs> And in more tackle news on the field, let's meet Marissa Rohan, the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball girl. She's been dubbed a hero after she tackled a fan who ran onto the field during Sunday's 6-1 win over the Rangers. There she is, and there's her tackle taking him down. Damn. Yes, the guy ran onto the field. The guy ran onto the field. Security couldn't catch him, and this girl just came Put her shoulder into him Wait, and, knock, and, and knocked him right over the fence. Watch. Oh. There she oh, is. That's a girl. That's a girl. The... Boom. Knocked over the fence. Oh, wow. Uh, she's not a girl. She's actually a woman. 24 years old. I'm calling her bat girl, okay. but she's a 24 year old. Bat woman. She's a bat woman. She's a senior at California State University pursuing a degree in deaf studies. And she is uh, a proud member of the Alpha Phi sorority. You know what that one is? Alpha Phi. Alpha Phi. Oh, I definitely know Alpha Phi. You know Alpha Phi? We had, we had, uh, and she's from CSU, so mm -hmm. I went to a CSU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yo-Yo had a few dates from Alpha uh, Phi. I will not, <laughs> I will not, I plead the fifth. Do you, have a few, do you have a few dates there from Alpha Phi, Yo-Yo? Al Alpha Phi, I definitely know Alpha Phi uh, sorority. All right. <laughs> all right, and that's our, that's our schmooze for the day. Uh, in today's Bradication, I discuss stop and frisk, also known as the Terry stop, and where the law originated from. Let's watch. My goal is straightforward, to make the law usable and easy to understand for everyone. All of us in the United States have equal rights and should have an equal opportunity and a right to justice. I'm here to help because I want everybody to achieve their American dream. I'm Brad Bernstein, and this is your decriminalization bradication. My objective is to make the law easy for you to understand so that you can use the justice system, know your rights, take advantage of the law, and achieve your American dream. Stop and frisk, known as the Terry stop. When walking down the street, what do you do when a cop stops you? And when can a cop frisk you? Now, the first thing you need to know is that a police officer can stop you on the street and ask you questions in furtherance of their policing duties. Generally, there are two types of stops initiated by police in which you are not free to leave. First, the obvious one is the arrest. When a police officer has probable cause that a crime is being committed by you, the officer has a right to arrest you. The second time that police can stop you is the Terry stop, or more commonly known as the stop and frisk. When a police officer has what is called reasonable suspicion that a crime is being committed by you, the officer may stop you and detain you for a reasonable period of time and ask you questions to confirm whether you committed a crime. Now, the origin of all of this is the landmark 1968 case of Terry versus Ohio. The United States Supreme Court announced this new rule and held that a person can be stopped and briefly detained by a police officer based on a reasonable suspicion of involvement in a punishable crime. A helpful indication from the court was its statement that reasonable suspicion must be more than a hunch. So here's your bradication within a bradication. In 1963, a police officer in Cleveland saw two men pacing by the same store over and over again on foot, looking inside. It appeared they were casing the store out. A third man joined up with the men and they began walking toward the store. The police officer stopped them, identified himself and asked what they were up to. 
When one of the men gave a mumbling, non-responsive answer, the officer spun one man around, patted him down, felt a pistol, and arrested him. The trial allowed the gun into evidence over the defense's objection, and the appellate courts affirmed. The Supreme Court also affirmed, finding the existence of reasonable suspicion and announcing this new law. And on Monday, Tuesday, hump day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you could always go to OnlyFans TV to watch all of our Bradducations on the Brad Show live. But I am on the OnlyFans. We are on the OnlyFans TV under, uh, was it, what is it under, Jilly? It's under advice, advice, not under Uncle Brad taking your clothes off. It's under advice. All right, ready for some meat and potatoes? Let's do it. Let's do it. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Dwayne in Birmingham, Alabama. Dwayne. What's going on, Brad? Good. What's going on? Everything's good. All right. Um, I got two questions for you. Sure. I got an RFC the 20th of May. Mm-hmm. Say the request for everything is that um, I was registered 10 years after birth, late registered. But the thing is that who's filing for they you? They want me to prove my wife. Okay, so they, they, they want proof that you are who you are. Yeah, but um, one of the, the main problems I'm having is my father passed away. So I don't know how to get any evidence from him. What, so I was going to try they, and get what are DNA. They, what are they asking for? Tell me exactly what they're asking for. All right. For. On the secondary evidence, what they're asking for is I should get uh, medical records or church records, school records, or so forth. But, but what, none of them records, my father's name is not unknown because he wasn't in my life. That's fine. You don't need your father's name. Your wife is filing for you. They just want to make sure that you are who you are. So if just your mother's name is on everything, that's perfectly fine. And get like two or three affidavits from people who say they were around the time they were around at the time you you gave birth, and this woman, your mother, is is your mother. And but I did all that and so, and gave it to my lawyer, and he says that that that's weak evidence. Well, I don't know. I would I have to look be, at. I it. should do a DNA. I would, but why do you need to do a DNA if if your mom's not filing for you? I don't get that. Let's have a consultation. Let me look at exactly what they're asking. Hold on one second. All right. Let's go to Aunt Wayne in Panama City Beach, Florida. Aunt Wayne. Antoine. It's probably Antoine, not Aunt Wayne. Right? Antoine. Yeah. Yes, Antoine. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Good, good. What can I do to help you? Okay, I want to know how to go back to get my social. How to go back and get your social? Yeah, how I go back to get it? Uh, the process. A, do you have a green card? If, no, I, I'm not. I don't have a green card. Do you have a work permit? No. I, are you legal? Those are, are the you, things I want to ask okay, about. Okay, all right. You can't get a. You can't. If you had a social security number or card at some point in your lifetime and you don't have that card anymore but you are not in legal status social security will not give you a new card you got to get in legal status first once you get in legal status you'll get your old social security number back on an on on a new card but you just can't walk into social security and say hey it's antoine from panama city i'm out of status can i get a social security card even though you have had that number issued to you in the past yeah. So you got to figure out a way to become legal. Hold on one second. Let's go to Gracie in Asheville, North Carolina. Gracie. Hello, Brad. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I have one question for you. Yes. Um, I got married. I was here on a work permit, got married, but then my time is finished. Um, my time has expired here, but my husband is a green card holder. Do I have to wait until he becomes citizen for me to apply for my if for you, my green card? If you want to adjust your status, yes. If you're gonna 
go home with a provisional waiver, you can start now. Okay. Because you've but, overstayed um, your time. The only time you can adjust based on uh, marriage to a permanent resident is if you yourself are in legal status, you have not overstayed, or you're 245I eligible. 245 oh, because my time was finishing in January. Because I got married before my time was up. Yeah, then you needed, but you then, needed, to, um, you needed to have filed before your time was up, too. And then okay. you would have been okay, unfortunately. Okay, sir. Thank right, you sir, so everybody. much. Have a good okay. day. Let's go to Sandra in the Bronx. Sandra. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, my husband is here, but I'm on food stamp right now, and the government is helping me with some bills because I'm sick. Can I still file for him with a daily of support? You can, uh, I, if if possible, get off the food stamps. You know, you definitely need a second affidavit of support, but if possible, get off the food stamps. Okay, so it, it's not interrupted as with, as with the Trump administration, so you no, can file. You, you can because they look at the totality of circumstances, so it's not like the, the you know the positives and the negatives which under the Trump administration. You know, okay, collecting food stamps, though, and showing up to the interview and still being on food stamps, that's going to be a problem. But if you get okay, off but, now... Okay, but, I'm in, but I'm, in the process, I'm, in, I'm in the process of getting disability. Disability is okay. Okay, disability is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the affidavit data support. Correct. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Bag then in Louisville, Kentucky. Hello. Hi, how are you? <clears throat> I am good. How are you, sir? Good, good. What's going on? I, I, I am. Uh, I have a question regarding for someone, not for me, but okay. they say I can ask you. Okay. Hello. I'm listening to your question for about somebody else that's not you. What is the question? Okay. The woman uh, had a green card holder, 10 year old. She has a green card uh, for 10 years. Right now, next uh, September, it's going to expire. But the question is, uh, she has a 12-year-old uh, son. She has a what son? And uh, his son and green card are also going to expire. Okay. So uh, she needs to apply renew for both, or if only she apply for her green card, and automatic her son green card go to renew. No, you have to, uh, uh, you have to make it Her son not going to 12. He is, uh, I mean, not going to 14 now. Okay. Right now, she, he is only 12, and next year he's going to 13. Yes. If you're renewing the 10-year green card, you got to file one application for mom and a separate application for the 13-year-old. Even if he was three years old, you would have to file a separate one. It's on an I-90. So it's two Okay. Yeah, so she did apply for her online. And for her son, she did by mail. Is that okay? Because uh, she fine. want to pay one fee, and other one she apply for nine one two two. That's that's perfectly fine. Because uh, already one or two week, uh, but uh, nothing respond from the oh, his be, son. You're, you're, it's going to be weeks before you hear back. What is it, sir? It will be weeks before you hear back. But that's perfectly fine. What she did. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I have one suggestion for you. Yes. If uh, you guys make uh, some uh, like Indian languages, because there are any people in office, so they will, you get a lot of one on there too. Thank you very much. I will take that suggestion. I will. I would be help you about that too. Thank you. Thank <laughs> because you. in India, like they have a different languages, like a twenty-five different yes, language, I different states. Yep. <laughs> so it's very hard. All okay. right. Thank you. But uh, yeah, a lot of people have. I know they have it all the time. They're looking for someone. Sure who speak in their language, a little helpful. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much, sir. Yo, yo, start taking some Indian language classes, please. We'll put you in charge. I, 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 I will try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marlon in Boston. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Good, what's going on? Good, Um, I have one question to ask you. What is uh, you know, I applied from since last year, um, sometime last year, but it's over a year now, yeah? Yep. I-485, I-765, yep. all those. And um, I received my biometrics from since last month, right. the 27th. Uh -huh. Just as I finish, 
case updates, show that fingerprint was taken, and then schedule for an interview right away. I don't okay. understand. Should I be worried? No. Oh, okay. Just want to make no, sure because... No, no, it's fine. Um, it's just, that, you know, everything slowed down because of COVID. Now everyone's coming back and they're trying to rush through and do everything. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, man. Thank you. It's fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's go to John in Loxahatchee, Florida. Loxahatchee, Florida. John, how are you? Yes, sir. What's going on? Good, e- good evening, Mr. Bird, to you and your, your team. Um, Thank you. I, I came to this country um, in the 90s, 1990, and yes. I, I entered without inspection, and I was placed in, in removal. And in 2014, my wife, or oh, less few days ago, 43 years of marriage, uh, filed for me. And I got my interview back home. But a lawyer is telling me that if I go, I would have a, a, a huge problem trying to get back in. When you, let me ask you a question. When you um, were ordered deported, you got caught at the border or you were in the United States and then they found you? I was in the United States, like about maybe 100 miles inside the country. Okay. So I assume they did not charge you as an arriving alien. I assume they charged you as someone who entered without inspection, and you don't even know yourself. No, entered without inspection. Okay, okay. All right. So what you need to do is uh, one of two things. Um, one, um, uh, reopen your deportation case to do a provisional waiver or more likely what I would probably do for you is just do the provisional waiver, the I-601A. If you go home, there's two reasons why you would be turned down. One is you've been out of status for more than a year and two is you left under an order of deportation. You can do waivers to cover all of that while you're in the United States before you leave. So you can do a 601A waiver to overcome the 10-year bar for being out of status for more than a year. And you can do a 212 waiver to overcome the bar to re-entry after deportation. You can do both of those waivers here. You don't even have to go back to the judge if you don't want to. You can get them approved, and then it's very safe to go home. You'll be back in two, three weeks. Okay. How long would it, these waivers take to uh, About 18 to months. Get- they take a long time. I will eat so, alone. Yeah, so start, okay? And in the meantime, can I get work authorization no. by any chance? No, 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 no. no. Eventually, you're going to get a green card. The quicker you do this, the better. Hold on. All right. And by the way, if you didn't get your immigration questions asked and answered, which is a pop-up, so we're doing a shortened show, you could always follow me on Instagram at Real Brad Bernstein. Uh, drop me a DM. I'll be happy to answer your questions as best as I can. You could also follow us at Brad Show Live. Uh, you can't handle two hours or even a pop-up for an hour and watch 30 seconds of Bradshaw Live on Instagram. And you can also now leave your immigration questions on Bradshaw Live TikTok. And then you get a video response from me. I can't do it for everybody. I try to do it for as many people as I can. And, uh, Jonathan? Yep, you guys can follow me. Oh, <laughs> you guys can follow me at Jonathan Elias TV on Instagram. And you guys can find me at Vanessa.ContreraStevie. All right, you guys ready for some social media checking? Let's do it. All right, William Patrick Kamga, a Brad Squad VIP member. Can a church file for an undocumented person to adjust his status? No, unless they're 245i. Khan Nathama, another Brad Squad VIP member. How long does it take to get a receipt from immigration for I-485 payments and documents? It's taken about eight weeks now. Lee E on YouTube. I'm a U.S. citizen trying to petition for my mom who's overseas. What documents should I file? How does the new rule for medical work since she is overseas? You file an I-130 visa petition for her. She's the U.S. citizen daughter of a filing for mom. Uh, U.S. citizen trying to petition for the mom. Yeah, I-130 visa petition. Janet S. on YouTube, I have an ACD currently active and two misdemeanors pending trial. I had an argument with someone and I left tons of voicemails in anger. Will I need to file a waiver with my I-360? Um, depends on what happens with these 
two open cases. You're also going to have an issue to get the I-360 approved. You need to show you're a person of good moral character. So you're going to have an issue uh, both ways. Okay, uh, Akeem S. on YouTube. I'm filing VAWA while visiting now. Uh, what should be included with the I-360? Been married five years, been visiting my LPR spouse here for four years, four, point, uh, four, and four to five months each time. Petition filed in 2017. Well, if you're here now and you've been here for more than 90 days, I'd file an adjustment application. Devon Roll on YouTube, my cousin's I-130 got approved, but his I-485 got denied due to not submitting RFE for certified, for certified police records on time. Should he just reapply? Also, if a sibling's I-130 is approved, but the sibling is out of status in the U.S., what will be the process for a waiver? Are there any other options? Uh, he should uh, answer the question number one, yes, reapply again for the adjustment. Uh, I don't know enough about the siblings. I would need to know a lot more. And last one for now, Susie uh, Antoine on Facebook. If someone has been residing in the U.S. since July 31st of the year of this year, do they qualify to apply for Haitian TPS? No, you had to be here by May of this year. All right. Now, in today's close-up spar and Bernstein client, Sasha Ford tells us what it's like using spar and Bernstein to handle her green card case. Rat squad, they did oh. my case, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm very knowledgeable because I was so involved in from the beginning of my case until, you know, the ending." I'm from Jamaica. I, I moved here five years ago. After getting married, I reached out to to the firm, and I was quickly put with a lawyer and a paralegal. And you know, the process was not bad. All I had to do was to submit everything they asked me for yeah. okay, in a time. timely fashion. Right. You know, make my regular payments like they do payment plan so that's like the greatest part of it and then you know everything just flow all i have to do is just to show up wherever they ask me to show up and my interview went really great my lawyer was there with me my husband answered you know fairly well and i just sat there and then it was my turn so you know it wasn't hard by the time i was two years into my marriage i already have my 10 years the firm helped me they did everything for me all i have to do was to submit the paper I made my payment and they work on the, the behind the scenes. Just go to Brad and get it done and over with and you're good. All right, you go <laughs> Sasha Ford, right? Yeah. I love I, I love I love a little Sasha Ford in you the middle I, of the show. You know I love me some Sasha yeah. Ford. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the Sasha Sass for me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, let's do a few more social media before we get into our speed round. Absolutely. All right. Uh I Dedepi, uh, de uh, David on YouTube. I filed in September 2018 and I have gone for interviews twice, but I keep renewing my employment authorization. What should I do for now? Wait, what, ha what did I say again? Filed in September 2018 and I've gone for interview twice, but I keep renewing my employment Man authorization. Davis. Anna Lee Parker on Facebook. I recently traveled home on an I. Uh, I-131 to visit my dad who was ill. However, the I-131 that I traveled on was only valid for 30 days and one-time travel because I did an info pass appointment and went in person. I've now applied for another I-131 and used more than once. Will I get it? I still have an I-485 and an I-130 pending. Yes, you will get it. All right, Muhammad Islam on YouTube. Is there any opportunity for U visa applicants in the coming budget reconciliation? Um, we don't know yet, but we do know that they have uh, changed the rules for U visa applicants. You can file for work permits now uh, based on humanitarian factors. I, actually, not even so humanitarian factors. It used to be, let me take that back. It used to be humanitarian factors. Now, as long as you have a bona fide U visa application, you can do it. Simone Myrie on YouTube, can I adjust status for a child who is now 21? Uh, if you had an I-130 filed for him or her beforehand and you're a U.S. citizen, yes. 
If not, they're in the F1 category. They got to wait a while. Okay, Edwards Moore on YouTube. The NVC says, I need a joint sponsor and the consular office will make a decision on my case. Will I still get an interview appointment? Yes, two more. Sanjay Tawari on YouTube. My sister wants to apply for divorce in Indianapolis. She has a four-year-old son. She cannot find a lawyer who can help her file for divorce and help her get custody of her child. What can she do? She doesn't live in Antarctica. She lives in a state in the United States of America. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of lawyers, tens of thousands of lawyers in every state. What the world doesn't has enough of <laughs> is lawyers, trust me. All right, we're not, we don't have scarcity of lawyers. She can find a lawyer somewhere that can help her do a divorce. Okay, Renee Stewart, last one on Facebook. If I got a green card as a child from my U.S. citizen father, but I've never lived in the U.S. and the card expired in 2019, what can I do? Can I renew or am I vested as a citizen or does he have to refile for me? I'm now 24 and still live in Jamaica. Well, if you never entered the United States or haven't been living here for all these years, you gave up your green card, you got to figure out a new way to get your green card. Unless, was he living here under 18? Well, the U.S. citizen father? Well, Renee, Renee says that they got the green card as a child from the U.S. citizen father, but he, that uh, Renee never lived in the U.S. Did he ever enter the U.S.? It d d doesn't say that, but it says the card expired in 2019. He's either a U.S. citizen or nothing. So it's not a green card from well, Yeah, because if he entered the United States and lived even for a short period of time in the United States with the father... It says, I never lived in the U.S. Then he has nothing. Yeah, there, we go. there it is. <laughs> All right. It's ready for our nine questions yes, in sir. 50 seconds. Yes, so, if we get this, we did the whole week. It's Friday the 13th. Oh, don't say that. But yes, because, well, you know, Friday the 13th. Let's pretend we're Taylor oh, no. Swift. We we're got this. We're going to pretend we're Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor right. Swift, Taylor Let's Swift. Let's be swift with Taylor it. Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. Say it faster. Taylor uh, Swift, Taylor Swift, I can't say it faster. <laughs> That's pretty good, Taylor yeah. Swift, Swift, I can't can, do can it. You say, how fast can you say Taylor Swift can't five times, Vanessa? Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. That's so good Touché, <laughs> touché. All right. All right. How much does bad credit affect naturalization? Zero. Can an officer deny naturalization without a reason? No. Can an asylum seeker get advanced parole? No, you have to be uh, granted asylum and file an adjustment for advanced parole. Can someone be deported after serving time for a federal crime? Of course. Can I travel domestically if I overstayed my I-94? Yes. When can I file for my spouse after marriage? The next day. Can I apply for a U.S. passport for my child? If they qualify as a U.S. citizen, why not? Which is faster, K-1 visa or a spousal visa? K-1. Can I get a copy of an I-797 approval notice? FOIA. Is it normal to not get an interview for an asylum for two years? Yes. How long is the work permit approval time? About six months. Come on! That's, tw that's 11. Did 12. We did 12. We did 12 before we blew up. But we still got it. Yeah, I don't we even, still, I don't, I don't, we that's still got it. the balloons, man. No. We, we did it. it. We did it. All week long. Oh. Monday. Tuesday, hump day, Thursday, Friday, you name the day, we did nine immigration questions in less than 50 seconds or a week. This could be, this could be, it's not, it's not a branch of life record is it no because we've done it before we've done it before <laughs> all week remember when i had i had champagne at home there was one week when we were shooting at home. All right, and I so let's champagne. see. Let's, have we ever done it two weeks straight? No. Let's shoot for that no, next let's week. Shoot for that. Let's shoot for that next and week. You want to know what, Brad? You want to know what? This is for um, the day before yesterday, before I got sick, huh? That you were like, okay, those questions didn't count because they didn't answer them right. Yeah, we answered extra today. Yeah, we there you go. There, there you go. go. There you Comments go. Of the day. All right. Let's Comments of the day. What do we got? <laughs> All right, our first comment of the day for Friday comes from Carol Anderson, the Tiger, saying, I just love Friday. It's such a funny and happy show. It's so cool. It is. I Thank agree. you. Yes. It's my favorite. Yes. It's always it's my favorite. It's always yeah. fun. Okay, our next. 
Sharon Williams saying, everyone is doing all types of videos, and I believe Britney Spears will be more than okay. She works hard for her money. That's right. She definitely does. She, she def definitely does. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Third one comes from Willie L. Williams. Why, why are you so mad? Yo-Yo and the... And the bird played chicken, and Yo-Yo lost. <laughs> Can we see that one more time? Let's just see Yo-Yo yeah. losing to the to the I, bird. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think William Williams is exactly on point. I don't think he's ever been more on point ever. I think I won because I got away from Who him. Who said ah? Was that was that the bird or you? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I don't know who's I don't know who what ah! Was that no, Yo Yo or the, the bird? bird? Willie called it. Willie called it. <laughs> was that who? Who made the bird noise? The was bird it the bird? Did. Let's see that one more time. Who made that noise? Fisher. Second. Oh! <laughs> yo, yo, making that noise. Isn't there a copyright thing? You okay. can't play a video too much. <laughs> it's your video. <laughs> All right, anything else, we have Vanessa? One last comment of the day. Rocky Elite's runner says, thank you for helping the whole world of immigrants and those who want to get to the USA. Oh, very nice. Thank you very yes. much. That's very nice. All right, everybody. Stay safe on Friday the 13th. Seems to be okay so oh, far. Okay, okay. Yes. We'll see you all tomorrow. I'm not tomorrow. So, Sam, as part of the production, we have to say this disclaimer at the end of the show. Do you mind reading it for me? Okay, but you know, Brad, I have to do everything around here. It's bad enough. I've got to remember everything that happened on the episode from the previous day. Forget it. I'll do it. The proceeding was information only and not specific legal advice. Consult an attorney about your individual situation. Prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Spar and Bernstein Law Firm, located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easy to remember, 1-800-LAW-LINK. That's 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Spar and Bernstein, located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, make the call, make the link, make the connection, make it Spar and Bernstein. 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. That's 1-800-529-5465. 529-5465 and now conveniently located in Hartford, Connecticut on 1 Congress Street. Visit us in Connecticut or in New York at 225 Broadway. That's 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-LAW-LINK. 1-800-529-5465.